Creating clothes in Blender has come a long way, especially in recent years. And this is an area that might help the software go to the next level in terms of creating assets and characters. But despite these updates in recent years, Blender is still struggling to match with the industry standard software such as Marvelous Designer or Houdini for example. Not until an add-on called Simply Cloth came to the rescue, but did it really? So what is the story behind this tool and why it almost didn't exist? Before we learn about how Simply Cloth saved the day, first, it is important to figure out what the problem was in the first place, don't you think? While the cloth simulation system of Blender has its fair share of challenges from a technical point of view, I would say one of the most striking issues is that everything takes a long time. So how did Simply Cloth solve the issue you might ask? Well, it can achieve a lot of things. But its main appeal to me at least is how it makes the entirety of the cloth creation process way easier. It presents itself as a simple to understand side panel that regroups all the necessary operations for creating and editing cloth, which eliminates the need to go back and forth between the endless menus of Blender and believe me, I've been there and the experience isn't great. But this add-on can really solve the problem. For example, it has simulation settings to convert 3D plans into clothes, or parameters to adjust the likes of pressure and sewing, among other things. But we are just getting started, because let me tell you, this add-on comes equipped with too many features, such as 200 presets to manually create all sorts of clothes, as well as the ability to add extra details on your designs with either geometry nodes or manually, for example to add pockets or a hoodie. We can also directly assign selections of the clothes as either tight or fitting, in addition to offering sculpting brushes and many more other features. But the general gist of it, it can provide you as an artist with much more control over the clothes and the ability to edit them in all sorts of ways to come up with unique designs. And as impressive as that is, the question now is, how did we get here in the first place? The mastermind behind this iconic tool is a developer named Vyacheslav Thiessen, also known as Vyacheslav T. Someone who, in an interview who gave to InspirationTask.com, described himself as more of an artist with an extra background in music rather than a traditional developer. He stated that he is just someone who is able to learn new stuff, and even though slowly, he is still able to learn enough to figure something out of it, which is impressive. In line with that, the origin behind the tool was after Vyacheslav found himself in an uncomfortable situation when he was doing some work with Blender. Just like he stated in an interview he gave to BlenderMarket.com, the inspiration came from the fact that a company asked me to create beds and blankets for 3D visualizations and to create them exclusively in Blender. I got a great result after about 2 hours, but I was dissatisfied with the fact that I had to adjust the values back and forth like a hundred times until I got a result that was satisfactory for me. So the first idea that came up to me is to combine these many parameters in Blender and make it easier. And that's how the idea for Simply Cloth came about. Bartok Stiparak, the guy behind the hair tool, garment tool and more, who have over 10 years of experience in Blender, gave me the motivation to start and advised me to start developing the add-ons. But what if I told you that the journey of this tool almost never happened? It is crazy to imagine that nowadays, isn't it? But despite not encountering any issues with the development, Vietslav still had to face some individuals who told him that it was not worth it because the niche was too small and he wouldn't be successful with it. However, he didn't let that discourage him and he uploaded it to Blender Market, thinking probably what do I have to lose, especially when we remember on the upside it had the chance to be a great add-on and a tool that can be successful in the Blender community. And by looking at how successful the add-on is nowadays, we can at the very least say for sure this guy was right about his decision, because as the sales were slowly increasing and the users got more satisfied with it, it gave him more motivation to continue working on the project and implementing new features. And at the same time, 
he got to learn a lot about Blender and Python. Before we continue, do you want to create environments like these? If the answer is yes, then this course by Max Hay is the perfect pick for you. Throughout this training, you will learn how to build each of these environments from scratch, picking up along the way important concepts like composition, modeling, lighting, rendering, and so on. You can also check some of the stuff people created following the course. Another bonus for choosing this course is getting the full fantasy slash sci-fi asset pass, which is fantastic. And to check it out, you can click the link in the description down below. To create a tool of this quality, I think we can all agree it is not an easy task, especially for someone like the developer who doesn't do it full time. So to address this issue, he said, I don't do it full time, but I work on most of the add-ons alone. Sometimes. I need some help with modeling, so I ask my friend Daniel, who helps me because he learned Blender as well. So the experience during the development is smooth and rough, depending on the tasks I create in my mind to achieve some easy workflow. He explained that his approach often starts by working in a regular way on some projects, you know, just creating 3D content how we usually do, for example, modeling an object, animating, and so on. That he tries to identify time consuming processes during some parts of his work, and he tries to figure out a way on how it can be done more easily, which I find not only interesting but also a clever way to look at it, as it can save a lot of time and effort. Following this, he starts searching for existing add ons or ideas about the subject, and if he finds one, he starts thinking if there are parts that he wishes were different. And finally, he starts to find solutions for himself in the form of an add-on. In a nutshell, the key for him is getting stuck during normal 3D work and think about an easier way to do it. And finally, the visualization and the development process. However, it doesn't stop there. As he added that he spends roughly an hour per day on client support and the additional work of coming up with new ideas, features, and improvements, which roughly speaking, takes between an hour to four hours per day. The success of Simply Cloth Pro can be described as nothing less than extraordinary. I would say it has become synonymous with cloth creation in Blender because it makes everything way easier. Regarding this success, the developer of the add-on stated, I never think about becoming successful or popular. It was never my idea to get popular or something like that. I just do my stuff and share it with honor because I think getting feedback is an important part of reaching the next steps in any purpose. I just thought, wow, I created my first add-on and I need to share it somehow. And from there it started. I don't like to hide my work. I like to share it to get feedback and then learn from it. He also added, feel free to do your own stuff and share it with the community. It is the best community I have ever experienced. I like Blender and the Blender market so much because it feels like a family from all around the world. And it is interesting to see the different workflows we can learn from each other and meet great friends. So guys, I hope you found the story behind Simply Cloth Pro add-on interesting and probably inspiring. Also, if you are interested in the add-on itself, you will find all the necessary links in the description. Thank you guys very much for watching again and I will see you in the next one.